Hi, and welcome to this video, which is all about universal functions and plotting. So the theme of this section is to use a combination of NumPy and matplotlib to plot functions and to make power plots and so on. The things we are going to go through is how to use functions like cosine, sine and the exponential. We're going to learn how to use pi and e. We of course are going to plot functions like the cosine, sine and so on. And we are going to learn to make power plots. The exercise set is going to be a continuation of the previous exercise set, but this time we are going to focus more on plotting the data rather than finding the max and the min and so on. So I hope this seems intriguing, so let's get starting with the section. Hi and welcome. This video is about universal functions. So first of all, what is a universal function? So a universal function is a function which acts on a vector element by element. So all the standard functions in the math library has a universal function equivalent. So examples is cosine, exponential, logarithm, and so on. Before we start, we need to make a numpy array. So let's make the vector. And let's just make a vector consisting of the numbers from 1 to 4. Let me also return the vector so we can see what it does. Okay, so here we have my array with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. And if I want to take the exponential of each of these numbers, I can do np.exp, which stands for the exponential of the vector here. And if I run the cell now, we end up with 2.7, which is e, and e to the power 2, e to the power 3, and e to the power 4, which is approximately 54. NumPy has also integrated a lot of the standard constants like pi and e. So for instance, I can take my vector and multiply it by np.py, which is NumPy's constant pi, and return. And now I end up with pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. So for instance, now if I want to take the cosine of this vector here, I can do np dot cosine for taking the cosine element wise, np dot pi times my vector here. And if I run this cell, it will take the cosine of pi, the cosine of 2 pi, and so on up to 4 pi. So let me run it. And now we end up with minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, which is exactly what we want. Similarly, we can also take np.logarithm, which is the natural logarithm of np.e, which is the number e, times my vector, and run this. And then we get the first number, which is 1, because the natural logarithm of e is by definition 1. And then we get 2 times e, and then the logarithm of this, and so on up here. So you might wonder why we have defined all this function by acting elements-wise, and hopefully it will make more sense after the next video, where we are going to go through plotting. So see you in the next video. Hi, and welcome. In this video, we are going to go through how to plot using matplotlib. So what is matplotlib? So matplotlib is a plotting library, so we can use it to make bar plots or scatter plots or functions plots and so on. So the first thing we need to do is to actually import matplotlib. So the way to do it is to use the import keyword and then matplotlib.pyplot and it's customary to install it with the alias plt. So let me run this cell. So now we have imported matplotlib. The first thing we need to do is actually to have something to plot. So remember when plotting, you need x values and corresponding y values. And then you draw them into a coordinate system and this is the plot. So let's do exactly that. My x values is going to be np dot arrange 5. So let me also return the x values. So here we have just the numbers between 0 and 4. And my y values 
is going to be np dot sin of the x values. So let me also return the y values. So remember what we get out is sine of zero, which is zero, sine of one, which is 0 0.84 and so on, sine of two, which is a 0 0.9 something and so on. And all these values are in radians. So the standard in NumPy is to take cosine, sine, and so on in radians, not in degrees. So now I want to use matplotlib to plot these x values corresponding to these y values. So the way to do this is with the plt.plot function. So if we take shift tab, we end up with a list here. So it plots y versus x as lines. So we just have straight lines between them. So let's see how it works. First of all, I take my x values and my y values. And to actually show the plot, if you are not using Jupyter Notebook, you will need plt.show like this. And let's run the cell. And what you can see here is that we have a plot with the coordinate 0, 0 here and a straight line towards 1, comma, sinus of 1, and so on here. So it looks kind of boxy, it's straight lines. So the way to make the plot look smooth is to have more values between 0 and 4 here. So let's do another plot, but this time let us try to make it look smooth. So I want to plot the function. And I want to plot the cosine function of x multiplied by 2, so 2 cosine. And I also want the domain, so I want to do it between 0 and pi. So we are going to do it in several steps. First of all, I want to make 100 points between the value 0 and the value pi. And the way I'm going to do it is to use the new function linspace. So my x values is going to be equal to np.linspace. So linspace takes in a starting point, an end point, and the number of points you want between the starting point and the end point. So for instance, in this case, I want to start at zero. I want to end at np.py. And let's say I want 100 points between zero and np.py. So let me also just print out the 100 values like this. And here you have 100 equidistributed points between zero and pi. So a quick note is that you can also do this with using the arrange function, which we have gone through previously. The only thing is that you actually need to compute what the step is going to be to make these 100 points. So when plotting and you want a specific number of points between the endpoints, then it's a lot easier to use linspace instead of using arrange. So here I have my 100 points, so let's do something with them. And the next thing I want to do is to define my y values, which is going to be 2 times, and then the cosine function, which is np.cos of the values x values. And let me also return. So here we have all the corresponding y values, which is by taking the x values and plugging them into this function. So now, since I have 100 values, our graph is going to be smooth. So let's try again with plt.plot x values, comma, y values, and run this cell. And now you noted that I did not use the plt.show. If you are using something else than you put the notebook, you will need the plt.show to make it show. But since we are returning a plot, we can also just run this cell without the plt.show. So I also want an x label and a y label, and this is done with the x label and y label functions. So let me do plt.x label. And then I take in the string, which is going to be my x label. So let me just call it x values and run the cell. 
And now we see down here, we have an X label. So let me also give it a Y label, which is going to be the function. And also since we can give in LaTeX code here, so let me also do that by writing dollar sign cos two times cosine of x and then end with a dollar sign. So this is just the LaTeX code for two times the cosine function of x. And let me run the cell again. And now we see that we have a y label, which is two times the cosine of x. So this was everything I wanted to go through in this video. In the next video, we are going to go a bit more through plotting. So we are going to go through bar plot and scatter plot, which I'll use a lot in statistics. So see you again in the next video.